The time is now. Do you want to give them more when the time is now? You've seen the rest now. You want the rest when the time is now. The time is now. Ernie Banks once said, let's play two, and that's exactly what we're going to do here on the campus of Marion University for the Knights hosting the Cougars of Mount Vernon Nazarene. Good afternoon, everyone. Alongside my broadcast partner, Jim Leisure, I'm John Cupo, and we are very happy to give you the second half of a doubleheader on a beautiful Saturday afternoon here on the campus of Marion University. And Jim, needless to say, the Marion Knights Started off a little bit slow in game one, but did what they had to do, and the run rule happened in that sixth inning as they took game one, 8 nothing. Yeah, hats off to uh, uh, Olivia Stunkel. She proves her record to 12-0. and 0. The 1.39 ERA that she came into the ball game with, of course, goes down. Uh, but the big story, I think, in that, in that first game was the 7, 8, and 9 hitters for Marion, Grace Meyer, Haley Green, and Jenna Minix. They scored, of the eight runs, they scored six of them. And they had, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven base hits. And I'm sorry, six base hits, and then one of them reached on an air. So in nine plate appearances, they got on base seven times, and then and that allowed the top of the order to knock them in. So when you get production with seven, eight, and nine, you tend to win. In game number two, they will leave it to the arm of Macy Cohn, the freshman from Kokomo. Home of the Wildcats with a K. And just a selfless promotion is that this year, ISC will be broadcasting Kokomo Vipers FC, the new team up in Kokomo for the UPSL. And I'm very humbled. I will be on those calls with my partner, Brant McCoskey. So the UPSL, two new teams, Southern Indiana FC, also on the docket for us this spring and summer. So be sure to tune in for UPSL soccer this spring and summer on the ISC Sports Network. So Zary Hill will lead things off as she did in game one for the Cougars. She did get one base hit, one of three in that first game. That ball outside. Corners playing her extremely in. Back in the bunt. Right back to the pitcher. Easy put out. One down. Well, they obviously had her well scouted and well positioned. As you know, she does have that kind of uh, swatting swing or that uh, just kind of put it in play. You see the replay there. Right back to the pitcher. And uh, nice job. Brings up Mallory Holcomb. And she slaps it. Knox eats it up. Good start. And Three one. pitches, two outs. That's what you want to see from your pitcher. You see, again, that slap style hitting. And, you know, that's good if you get it through the infield. If you don't, you, you better hope they bobble it. So I'll bring up Molly Pence. That ball caught the corner. First strike. Good start here for Cone. Molly 0 for 3 in the first game, a strikeout, pop to the shortstop, pop to left fielder, so left side be ready. And of course, she gets it to the right side. Knox eats it up, fires the first, inning over. So a quick inning for Cone. We'll go to the bottom of the first here on the IC Sports Network. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense, and investing in you makes good sense to us. 
Does your school offer high quality education? Does it offer virtual or hybrid options? Marion University Preparatory School educates students in a safe, faith-based environment focused on college and career exploration. Here at Marion University Preparatory School, we empower parents and help students to master what they love and learn as they live. We are now enrolling students in grades six through nine this fall. Full financial aid packages are still available. Act now to make MU Prep your school for 2022. Bottom of the first, here on a beautiful Saturday, March 30th. There's your starters for the Marion Knights. Very similar to game one, in which the Knights took eight nothing in commanding fashion to move their record to 23 and four on the season. R. Weger bounces that foul to the right side. He was one for three in the first game, had a little base knock. Knocked in a couple runs, I believe. Let me go back and double check. But again, seven, eight, nine got on. And uh, actually, I don't credit her with an RBI. But my book's normally a train wreck anyway. Came into this afternoon. That 500 bunts that one back. Nobody could get it down 0-2. Both pitchers getting ahead quickly. Macy Doan for Marion there in the first inning. I think through one, two, three, four, five pitches, you got three outs. Pretty effective. Nadia Hoffman, a picture over there, the junior from Maslin, Ohio, went to Tusla, played for the Mustangs. And Harweger swings through that one. Don't see that very often. Goes down swinging, one down. I thought she got fooled a little bit there. Her eighth strikeout of the season. Now, again, they played 20, what, five games, something like that? So, still pretty impressive. Here's Brooke Knox. She had her hands in a little bit of all the scoring in game one. Nice job of really being patient there. Knox waited on that pitch, waited on it. Was expecting it to break a little bit. It never did. She was able to kind of twist her hips and get out of the way, keep from getting hit by it. Similar pitch, similar spot. Count three and oh, good spot for Knox here. That ball down low and inside, so Knox gets aboard for the first base runner. Well, you know, free passes, I tell you, when I coached, I used to tell my pitchers, you know what, when you walk people, there's no great play. You know, if, if you pitch and let them hit it, there's eight people out there that they may actually may hit it right at, and we can get an out. But when you walk people, there's nothing we can do. That ball high. So right now, Hoffman have some trouble finding a zone. That's five straight. Knox does have one stolen base on two attempts. And that ball high. The ball's got good movement. It's just, again, it's high. So she's got to either stride a little bit more to bring the ball down because your, your, your hips drop and therefore the ball's lower, or you're going to, again, release point. You're going to release it a little bit later. And that got her. So right now, Nadia Hoffman, after striking out Harweger, just can't find the dish. Again, I got to believe it's just feel. You know, I mean, she's just not getting a good grip on the ball, and she's going to have to change something. You can't continue to do the same thing and expect different results. Change your release point, change your stride length, but change something. And that's going to bring up Sierra Norman. And that ball high. Up and in, right, every time. Early in this one, runners on first and second, one down. 
That ball high. Now here's the deal. That ball to me was close enough. But when you're that, I mean, you know, and, and again, I used to tell my pitchers, you can't throw balls in the left batter's box or right batter's box over the catcher's head and then paint the corner and expect him to give it to you. He isn't. You haven't thrown anything close to a strike. He's not going to give you that pitch. And that one came awfully close to hitting Norman. Is that an instance, Jim? You kind of lean into that one. That was a well, you know, I, I tell that you, was coming in off speed. Yeah, but you know, I want this kid to hit. You know, there were times when I was a player, and believe me, I was 40 years ago. But when I get hit by a pitch, it'd be like, you know, can I just stay here and hit? <laughs> I'd rather hit. And that's another ball. So two walks and a hit by pitch have loaded the bases here with one out for the Knights. So we're looking at. 11 balls in a row. What's that college? There's a college university somewhere in baseball where the, the, the fans just start going ball 11, ball 11, ball 11, and they really try to get in the pitcher's head. That's probably every school in the SEC. There's one that's <laughs> famous for it, though. Right? They kind of invented it. If anybody else is doing it. Is it Rocky Top, Tennessee? No. Get some help. Texas A&M, I'm being well, told I had here. the T, right? So, obviously, those folks uh, – they really get into the game. It's impressive. I've seen it. And there's a strike. So 0 and 2, the first pitch was again up and in, and I think the umpire kind of gave it to her a little bit. It was close. It was close enough. But again, normally you don't get that pitch when you've been as wild as she has been. Hoffman now down 0 2, does have 16 driven in this year. That one fouled straight back. I think that's going to find us close. Out of play. Hoffman stays alive for another shot. Base is loaded. One out. All three runners on. Two walks and a hit by pitch. Of course, Abby Hoffman, not to be confused with the other Abby Hoffman, part of the Chicago 7 political activist, arrested after the 1968 Democratic National Convention in Chicago. That ball fell back, and folks, Jim has been waiting to get that oh, reference man. in since the second inning of game one. Well, when I saw the name, I'm thinking... <laughs> She's got to be 80 years old. If it's that, of course, that Abby Hoffman happened to be a male. Well, this Abby Hoffman having a fantastic season. Came into this one batting 390. Now she's got a chance to add to that and add some RBI to her total. And she might get one out of this. We'll see. The charge in. And she, that's a great play. Hill got underneath it, and with that running start, there was no way that Knox could tag on that. Great shot of it there. You see there on the replay, and again, that's what you coach them to do. You want to stay back on the ball just a little bit so that you can catch it with all your momentum coming to, ho to home. Now that ball was honestly hit a little too short too, but she, she played it well. So that's going to give Lily Went a chance. That ball inside. I hate to leave this inning with nothing. You got to try to get at least one. Went up in the count 1 0. And that almost got her. Yeah, again, well, you got to throw strikes. I mean, I, I've, as a coach, I'd be more than happy for my kids to be very patient here. She's not throwing a lot of strikes. This is probably a take situation. Normally, 2 0 is a good pitch to hit. But, you know, as wild as she has been, I think I'd let her take a look at another one. That ball high. So went in a great spot here. Up 3-0. Coach uh, Fleming gives it a little bit different signal there. We'll see if he's turning her loose. Hard to tell because, again, that pitch was one that no reasonable or prudent hitter would even try to swing at with uh, a 3-1 count. Went gets another shot. Base is packed, two down. And that ball up, so that's going to give the Knights the first run of the ball game. Advance everybody one. And right now all the runners on base and all the scoring has been due to walks and a hit by pitch. Yeah, three, or I'm sorry, four free passes, and it looks like Coach has already seen enough. The afternoon ends early for Nadia Hoffman. And 
And in her place comes in the sophomore from Belleville, Ohio, Madeline Wine. They're going to change the whole battery here as they're bringing in a new catcher as well. Madeline Wine making her 10th appearance on the season. So Sydney Hoover, the starter in game one, will come back in behind the dish. Maybe a situation where a kind of a Steve Carlton to Tim McCarver where maybe Madeline uh, Wine is a little more comfortable throwing to Hoover, so. Just all sorts of changes here for Coach Howell and the Mount Vernon Nazarene Cougars. So here on this March 30th. So Sydney Elliott, number 88, was the starter behind the dish in game two. And she is out of the game. Now she can re-enter, and we'll see if she does, but did not get a chance to hit as she was in the nine hole, and they simply did not get that far. So that brings up Grace Meyer. And that ball outside. So yeah, lefty lefty here. So that you ball don't see that often. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The ball tails away from uh, from Meyer. So we'll see whether she's able to slap it the other way. Stay with the pitch. Keep the shoulder in and just drive it the other way. There's a big gap down the left field line. And that ball gets away. And that'll score a run. So good heads up by Madeer. She'll score on the pass ball. And yeah, we'll take a look here. That's clearly a pass ball. And that ball was 100% catchable. And everybody will advance. The runner's on second and third. The run scores. The Knights up 2-0. And the count 2-0 oh on Meyer. Yes, the pitch was a ball, but certainly catchable. The ball fouled back. Yep. You can hear Coach uh, Fleming saying, all right, all right, meaning, you know what, I ain't mad at you. You know, you had the 2-0 count. Now, again, I used to tell my players, look, only your favorite pitch. And then they'd swing at a pitch. It was like a foot over their head. I mean, like, that's your favorite pitch? Honestly, we need to talk. The 2-1. Slow roller off the glove of Miller. She recovers, steps on first, and that'll end the inning, but not before the Knights get two. We'll head to the top of the second. Marion, two. Mount Vernon, nothing here on the ISC Sports Network. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Macy Cohn will retake the mound here in the top of the second with a 2 0 lead. Two runs on no hits, all bases on balls and a hit by pitch for those two runs. Marion took game one, eight nothing. Didn't get through the entire ball game because of the run rule effect. Look at that beautiful pooch out there. Enjoying this weather on an absolutely beautiful very Saturday man. afternoon. Yeah. Look at that vest. But he was sitting very nicely and then when his handler said, hey, come on <laughs> brother, it's time to move. Very camera friendly out there. So Avery Miller. Start things off for the Cougars here in the top of the second. Let's take a ball wide, 1-0. -oh. There's 
There's a strike from Cone, Macy Cone. 4-1, 298 on the season. This is her 13th appearance. Location strike there. Catcher set up in a, in a spot. Pitcher hit it. That ball fouled to down the third base line. One and two. A lot of times, again, when a catcher sets up in a certain spot, again, let's say they're just a smidge outside, but the pitcher hits it, the umpire will give it to you. Slow roller, got to hurry. Fires the first and couldn't pick it. Harweger got it, just left it low, and Norman couldn't squeeze it out of the, the dirt. Again, you saw perfectly as you described it. I mean, it was just there was plenty of time to make the play, and ball was a little low. And again, that's a, a play that you want your first baseman to make but I'm not going to say it was easy. So Mackenzie Hancock will get a shot here, runner on first. Shows bunt, gets past the pitcher. Good play though by Norman. So Miller will get to second on the fielder's choice. Well, rotated the infield there. Obviously, the, the first baseman's charging. The second baseman has to be moving. When she's relatively certain that the ball is going to be bunted, she sees it going down off the bat. She's got to sprint to the bag. And if they're going to give you an out, you take it. That brings up Brooklyn Crum. Now, let's talk about that pitch for a second. That pitch, again, was slightly outside. But the difference has been that the, the pitcher has been hitting the zone. And so she's kind of walked it out there. Earlier in the ball game, the Mount Vernon pitchers were struggling to find them anywhere near the plate. And then when you know you get that, that one that paints the black and, and they want it, well, you got to kind of earn that. You know, I mean, Greg Maddox, great pitcher in the big leagues for years. I mean, he was famous for just walking the ball out. And that ball finds the gap just inside the line. It'll drop. Ball comes home, but good piece of hitting there by Brooklyn Crum, she gets on. Miller moves to third. And the Cougars with runners on the corners have an opportunity here. Great job by Abby Madeer of just going over and getting to the line and getting the ball in quickly. The ball was up the third baseline just a bit. It wasn't a perfect throw, but it was enough. Now we'll see if uh, Coach Howell decides to uh, put somebody in motion here. Brings up Kira Mayer. Mayor came into today batting 323 on the season. That ball sky to center field. On her way back and over her head. Fires that ball in. Runner scores over to third. And everybody's safe. Yeah, so Kira part. Mayer put a charge in that one. That yeah. scores Miller. Crum gets to third. And the Cougars are on the board. Yeah, you saw Miller there very wisely tagging up again. Uh, if she catches the ball in center field, if you're tagging up, you're on the bag, you can crawl home. So don't take any chances of a great catch putting you in a bad position. So Cougars got a little bit of a rally going here. That ball inside. So Cone got him easy in the first, but the Cougars have come alive here in the top half of the first, second. That's a strike, evens it up at one. Infielders have got to be asking themselves before the pitch, the ball's hit to me in the air, where am I going? It's hit to me on the ground, where am I going? And then just do it. You don't have time to think about it once the ball's in play. Bunt. That's a strike. Nobody moves and Melick. Down one, two. Melick didn't see action in the first game. The freshman from Howard, Ohio. Little fly ball. 
Cohn takes it. So two outs, but the threat's still alive. Runners on second and third. Big out, though, for Cohn. So as we mentioned in the other inning there, a defensive substitution, Hoover comes in in the nine hole. Pretty good hitter, batting ninth here with a couple runners on. There's a strike. So Cohn really needs to get out of this one. Got Mellick, little pop up to herself, and now Hoover, last order of business here in the top half of the second. And that ball rocketed down the third base line, but foul the line. And Hoover down 0-2. And that ball fired in the gap. It's going to drop. That'll score one. Here comes number two. Fire home. Not there. Throw to second, and she's safe. How about that? You couldn't ask for anything better out of your nine hole there. Now, again, she's not your typical nine hitter, but she gets a little duck snort there that gets just past the bag in second base and kind of dies and just goes into center field, scores runs because both runners were moving on contact, easily scores the runner on second, and then takes second on the throw. So Crum and Mayer score on the hit by Hoover. And just like that, the Cougars have a 3-2 lead. Well, they all look like line drives in the box score. Again, that was uh, not necessarily well struck, but it, but it counts. And back to the top of the order is Zary Hill. That one was real close, but Crum decides to call it a ball and 1-1. That ball outside. Yeah, I think that was purposely outside. That was one of those, let's see if she'll fish here. Let's see if she'll go out and try to hit a bad pitch. That ball slap foul. And it kind of helps if the person protecting the pitcher would actually look toward home plate because that's where the ball's going to come from. She was watching the young lady warm up and almost got her killed. <laughs> and coach... Howell is go, yeah. stating exactly that. You see the young lady there, uh, supposedly the personal protector, but doing about as good a job as the Secret Service did on November 22nd, 1963 with President Kennedy. For those of you who don't know, President Kennedy was assassinated that day in Dallas, Texas. Here's Zary Hill now, 2-2. That ball tip. And that'll end it. But not before the Cougars score three, their first lead. We'll go to the bottom of the second, see if the Knights can catch up here on the ISC Sports Network. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. sugar this is the pepsi with zero compromises this is pepsi zero sugar the lead is one for the cougars though three two after three in the top half of the second this is some i want to say timely hitting but just good hitting jim they put the ball where they weren't well, yeah, both. I mean, you you got to get timely hits, too. I mean, if you get a base hit, nobody on base. Who cares, right? But when you get a base hit, a little, like I said earlier, a little dying quail that just gets past the bag, when there's two outs and runners on second, third, all of a sudden it's a, it's a much bigger hit. So a couple of RBIs there, and we got ourselves a ball game. Green Minix Harweger, first three here for the Knights in the bottom half of the second, down 3-2. 
That ball inside. Ball again, just tailing inside. You know, again, it's release point. You got to release that a little bit more where it's going to be a catch a bigger part of the inner half of the plate. You know, because she's starting it on the corner and then it's breaking off the plate. Ball outside, 2 0. We're working both sides there. We're going inside out. And there's a strike. So 2 1 on Haley Green. She was busy in game one. Yeah, we've already talked about it again with Meyer Green and Minix going up a combined seven of nine on base percentage. That ball outside. Good spot here for Green, 3-1. Gosh, I used to love 3-1, man. I'm just, please, give me something I can drive. And to second, scoops it up, fires the first, one down. Ball just off the end of the bat, didn't get it on the, the sweet spot, if you were. Um, kind of a cue ball. It was uh, hit to Kira Meyer, and she just, you're going to see it here. And ball's just kind of got a little backspin on it. And she does a nice job of staying down on the ball. Easy play. That'll bring up Jenna Minix. Minix had an idea. She thought about throwing the hands, decided against it. The umpire liked it better than she did. There's a slap but right into the mitt of Mayer. Who fires the first, but I believe she caught that in the air. So, Well, if you're not sure about it, yeah, make sure. No, absolutely. <laughs> I used to tell them, again, my kids, if, if your glove gets dirt, if your glove hits the dirt, then go ahead and finish the play. So that's going to bring up Savannah Harweger for the second time. Struck out in the first. Which that ball inside. Again, she, I think that was only her seventh or eighth strikeout on the season. So she's got to be seething. You know, you, gosh, you only get three or four at-bats in a game. And when you kind of leave one on the table, it just leaves a bad taste in your mouth. That's to Mayer. And safe. The speed of Harweger beat the throw of Mayer. It was a good play. No, I was going to say, but what about the play? That was really, really nicely done. Very close. And it looks like maybe a Coach Howard's going to want to see the, the second look. I don't know. Well, she could see that she kind of pulled the foot. Right. But the umpire didn't signal that. And we couldn't see from there whether the ball was in the leather. The umpire, normally they'll, they'll do the sweeping motion, you know, left or right. This is probably a better look. Now back from area number one, Brooke Knox. Well, the ball beats it, but maybe it was the foot. Yeah, well, again, if that's the case, then then let us know. Let it sell the call, you know. There's a fly to right. Right into the glove of Holcomb, and regardless of the call, no damage done. Wine gets out of it. Cougars keep the lead. We'll go to the top half of the third here on the ISC Sports Network. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. For the third we go, and a beautiful day. We've seen a lot of great pictures of the, the doggos out here today at Marion University. Look at the fluff on that. My goodness. It's like a grizzly bear in central Indiana here. What a beautiful dog. It's a big old dog, too. He looks a little, looks like he's got a little age on him. That's all right. Enjoy the weather here. This was a terrible morning. Scared all of Central Indiana. I mentioned in Game One. I think everybody hit the ceiling. Yeah, I think with a, a couple of cracks of thunder that hit this morning. And a reasonable person at that point would have wondered whether we got this in. But I, I just happened to be watching the morning news. And there's a slap right to Harwiger. She eats it up. Out number one. 
So I was confident. I was watching the hour by hour, and then, of course, you get on your favorite uh, weather website, whatever you use, uh, and I saw the hourly forecast, and it looked like it was going to all be gone by 8 a.m., and I knew we had enough time to dry it out. Field dried up real nice. Grounds crew did a fantastic job here getting this field ready for this doubleheader here on the ISC Sports Network, so credit to the Marion staff for their hard work. Of course, if this Powerball thing works out for me tonight, I'll just go ahead and turf this whole place, including the grassy areas like on campus. I'll turf it all. Just don't forget about your partner, Jim. Yeah, $956 million, I, I might turf the entire city. And I'll just play the role of my father, but after they take out in taxes, it's not that much. <laughs> Probably only $600 billion or a million <laughs> that you would get. That's a base hit from Pence. So the bats have come alive here for the Cougars here in game two. Now for the Cougars, 32, Hill. Seeing the ball a little bit better than they did in game one. Of course, they were facing the Knights number one. Mary Cohn still very good pitcher here for the Knights. That ball out of the zone. Good spot to start, though. You know, close enough. The ball was down. But a good place to start. Count 2-0. and oh. Pence on first. And that ball finds a hold past the diving... Harweger, so runners advance, Pence to second, Miller to first. We talked about this in the first game. You know, you could tell by the statistics that they are not a big power hitting team. They they got a, don't have a lot of doubles, don't have very many triples, and, and don't have very many home runs. So they're going to go base to base, station to station, and this is how they got to do it, right? You're going to have to string some, some hits along. There is one out. They could possibly move these runners to second, third. But she feigns the bunt. Kenzie Hancock. And, you know, some years you got a club that can, you know, knock the walls down with line drives, and other years you got to play some small ball. So. And slaps that ball. Fair ball. That's going to get to the fence almost, but that's going to score two. And on a double to the wall by Mackenzie Hancock. How about that again? She could not have rolled out, went out there and dropped this ball and look at her. She's kind of looking at her teammates going, yeah, of course I meant to do that. Uh, nice little inside out swing and the ball just drops right inside the chalk. Good call by the home plate umpire as the base umpire was in the field. Pretty easy call and away the runners go. So the Mount Vernon Nazarene Cougars. on two singles and double here in the third, have jumped out to a 5-2 advantage over the Marion Knights. So they've earned it. I mean, again, it's not like uh, you've given free passes, you've walked hitters or hit hitters. I mean, again, none of these balls have been hit particularly hard. Even that one wasn't a screamer. But you string three or four in a row, maybe one right there, but nope, foul. Brooklyn Crumb, she got things. She was involved in the, f the scoring. And yep. She didn't play in game one, but she got a base hit, and she did score in that top half of the second. Ball floats just outside. Nice look at it there. So, I'm, you know, I'm sure she's probably thinking to herself, I get a base hit here, and if things go right, I get an RBI. Hey, Coach, maybe you're playing the wrong kid. Maybe I ought to play more. That ball, slap foul. Again, one of the things that uh, I used to tell my players all the time, if you don't like batting eighth or ninth, get about three or four hits. Make me move you up. That ball high. She's making this a quality at bat here. Two and two with a spoiled pitch. Again, coaches, well, not all of them are dumb. I, I probably was, but, you know, 
I'll look out there and say, you know, maybe I am playing the wrong guy or wrong gal in this case. That ball outside. Because all this young lady does is get on base and score runs. So the count is full to the sophomore from Canton, Ohio. A golden eagle at Glen Oaks High School. That ball high, and it will find its way foul just inside the fence. Madeer couldn't get to it. So Crum will get another shot. Yeah, the only way she's getting to that, obviously, is she's really playing the line. And by that, I mean maybe 10 feet off of it. You know, if you had a kid, if you had enough scouting reports to say that, you know, they kind of like the shift in Major League Baseball where they always go to right field, then you would move them over there. That ball slapped just on the left side of the line down the third base side. So Crum showing she can go to all yeah. sides of the field. Now right, she's got to see <laughs> if she can get him in between yeah, the yeah, lines. Yeah. You went to the right field line. You went to the left field line. Now let's see if you can go right up the middle. 3-2. Hancock on second. And she goes back to the right side. This one will find its way out of play over the fence. All right. So we're running out of softballs here, Brooklyn. You got to put one in play, kid. And that finds its way coming back towards us. See, if we're playing in the neighborhood, we'd be like, we're out of balls. We can game over. Way to go, Brooklyn. Now we got to go do something else. In my neighborhood, we would have been done with the first one. <laughs> <laughs> game would have been over <laughs> eight pitches ago. Now you got to go fishing because we ain't got, no, you got any more softballs left. And fouls that one. We can play with that one. That was first foul ball in about five that didn't clear the fence. But, again, what about this at bat? I mean, 3-2 count. She's fouled off at least four, maybe five. I went to Our Lady. We don't count so good. I can't remember. And that's going to be straight up in the air. Minix under it. Puts it away. So she did go right up the middle on that one. So a very good at bat for Brooklyn Crum. But it ends in a fly out to Minix. Hancock stays at second. And I'll be give a chance to Kira Mayer, who scored in that second inning. Well, now, of course, it's a little easier to score from second with two outs. You don't have to worry about a line drive caught. You're moving on contact. Mayer swings through that one, 0-1. Oh, one. Of course, you're only moving. I mean, if it's, if it's hit the third, you're not going. But uh, anywhere else, you're probably going. Even short stuff, you're probably going to go ahead and take off because they're probably going to throw across and get the easy one. There's a rocket shot to center, but Minix is there to collect it, but not before. The Cougars get two more. They extend the lead to 5-2. to two. We'll see if Marion can come back in the bottom of the third here on the ISC Sports Network. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. We're back on the campus of Marion University, but the tides have turned here in game two. It's the Cougars of Mount Vernon Nazarene up 5-2 against the hometown Knights. So the blue and gold are gonna have to go to work here and they'll start with number 11, Abby Madeer. Rolls it foul. And Jim, Marion really should embrace this one because after this, they gotta get their traveling shoes on because they are on the road for, for quite some time. They'll head to Taylor on Tuesday. Next Friday, they'll head up to Fort Wayne to take on St. Francis and their Cougar squad. That ball low. Well, they've been uh, home now, I think, was it 14, 14 consecutive yep. games? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And after that, 
over to Huntington. They'll head to Grace the following Tuesday, April 9th. Ball fouled at the plate. Thursday, April 11th, head up to Goshen. Take on the Maple Leafs. And then they don't return home until April 13th. Well, they'll host the Maple Leafs of Goshen. So quite the road trip for the night. So it would be a good idea to get one here because they'll be road weary when they come back on the 13th. That ball up the middle. Good play by Hancock. Fires the first and got her. Wow. That is a big-time play. Everything about it here. You're going to see the replay there. Nice job of going to your left and scooping the ball and then just setting your feet. And the ball beats her by a step. It's a bang, bang play, but Madeer with a – or Hancock, I'm sorry, with a great play. That's short. That'll bring up Norman. The ball just inside, and again, I think uh, – Pitchers on both teams have kind of figured out that this umpire is not giving you much on the inside, but he is giving you something on the outside, so you need to probably stay out there. That ball outside. Which she tries to do but misses. That's all part of it. Every umpire, there's some umpires are low ball umpires. Some are kind of going to give you the little higher strike and not the lower strike. And you got to kind of figure that out. And that ball down. 3-0 to Norman. Coach Fleming with the look away, so I'm assuming take. Earlier when he didn't go 3-0 to somebody, he actually just wiped his chest and kind of pointed to the field so just as if to say, go ahead and hit it. And right down the pike, but still 3-1, so still a good spot for Sierra Norman. Fouled straight back, 3-2. Nice job of the pitcher battling back here. You get yourself down 3-0. You got to kind of concede a little bit. You don't have to give in, but you're going to have to concede a bit and find at least a part, a part of the plate. The payoff. And fouled straight back towards us. And we'll do it again. These We've Cougars will return home on Tuesday and host Grace College. And then they'll head back out on the road for two. Friday they'll go to Taylor. And then Saturday they'll head out to Indiana Wesley and take on the Wildcats. Seen a lot of really good at bats today, both in game one and game two. That ball fired straight back. Get out from under the table, John. I'll protect you. You ain't got to worry about it. You see, you were the coach. I was the player, but I was the one that you weren't playing. <laughs> I played too, but it was a long time ago, and I played center field. You had to hit it really hard to get me and hit in the face. I had plenty of time to get out of the way. If it was hit that hard, I'd just step aside. There's a fence back here. I'll stop it. And that ball straight to Hancock, and she'll eat it up for out number two. So the long at bat by Norman comes up empty. Two down. Kind of a soft liner there, but again, as you said, uh, Hancock with a nice play. She's been involved in both of the outs here. I see at the high school level, I used to say, you're going to get that girl scholarship. We keep hitting the ball to her, but hopefully she's getting a little something, a little grant and aid something. There's a strike. Abby Hoffman. Straight away center in her first at bat. Pitcher Madeline Wine came in when the Cougars were in all sorts of trouble. Nadia Hoffman started the game, and she has come down and settled things out and has herself a 5-2 lead. She really has, and again, you know, if you're Coach Howell, you, you got to feel like, you know, I got somebody now that I know I can count on, and again, maybe she deserves a start. Swings through that one, and that'll end it. 
So Madeline Wine continues to pitch well for the Cougars, and they maintain a 5-2 lead. We'll go to the top of the fourth here on the ISC Sports Network. This is the Pepsi for America's best barbecue. Worthy of 100-mile detours and 1,000 likes. Looks good. This is the Pepsi for mopping, dipping, and dousing. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? The best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. Marion University is like a home to me. Campus is where I made friends that I know will last a lifetime. Academic, sports, or arts, Marion's got something for you. Plus, downtown Indy is just 10 minutes away from campus. I'm a huge sports fan. Living in Indy, I've got the Knights, the Colts, and the Pacers. Applying was so fast and easy. I went to Marion for the education, but what I took away was the experience. Marion University offers an exceptional education and an unforgettable experience. Apply today for full scholarship consideration at marion.edu. On the campus of Marion University, it's the Cougars of Mount Vernon Nazarene holding a 5-2 lead over the hometown Knights. Here in the bottom half of the fourth, Shanda Mellick leading things off for the Cougars. Didn't see action in game one. A short pop-up to the pitcher, her first at bat. Fouls it off herself, down 0-2. And swings through that one, first out. Didn't take long. So Cohen helps her own cause with the strikeout of Mellick. Now batting at 13, Sydney Hoover. And now to bring up Sydney Hoover, who got things started. Or I should say, cause <laughs> either way, it caused a lot of havoc in that second inning. Put a double to the wall. But it was a quick change because it was Sidney Elliott who got the start, and then when Madeline Wine came in, it was a quick change to Hoover. But she flies out to Hoffman, so no damage done the second time. And Cohn has two quick outs here in the top half of the fourth. And we'll go to the top of the order, and Zary Hill. And again, once once again, the uh, infielders, corner infielders come in. She's kind of a slap hitter, choked up about an inch or two. You see that kind of walking toward the pitcher. She's just going to try to slap something past him or maybe the old Baltimore chop there where you bang it on the ground and let it bounce high and try to outrun it. Harweger eats it up, fires the first, inning over. So a quick inning for the Knights. They needed it. Let's see if they can get the six going. Bottom half of the fourth here on the IC Sports Network. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. So the Mount Vernon faithful have come out and they see their Cougars up in the bottom of the fourth with a 5-2 lead. We'll see if Lily went get things started for the Knights here. Yeah, probably not a bad drive. Come on over to the Circle City. Just a skosh over four hours. I'm from the opposite side of Columbus. That's where Mount Vernon located. Oh. 
that ball high, went up in the count, 2-0. Take an opportunity here to compliment both umpires. I thought both of them have been very consistent with their strike zones and pretty good on the base paths as well. That ball finds his own, 2-1. So if you're sitting at home and you think uh, you're remembering back to your glory days when you used to play baseball, softball, whatever it is, there's a local officials association in your area. You might want to give them a call, get back in the game. IHSAA.org. That's in Indiana. Where you want to go. Yeah, of course, in, in Ohio they have a, I'm sure, a, a similar one. OHSAA. Yep, I'm sure it is. Mm -hmm. and Dot org. That's actually how I got my start. A buddy of mine called me way back when, said we ought to get our umpire license. I did. From there, turned it into a... Nice little coaching gig. Cannot play the games without these officials. Multiple sports to do at every level, whether it's high school, yep. middle school, college anything. level, anything. They are in very importance. They're the backbone of our league. So go to either IHSAA.org in Indiana, or if you're watching in Ohio, OHSAA.org. Went grounds out to Hancock for out number one. That'll bring up Grace Meyer. Now batting from area number two, Grace Meyer. Grace ground out at the to the first baseman, her first time up, three unassisted. And that caught the umpire. We'll take a second. Yeah, this is normally where the catcher will walk out and talk to the pitcher about some mundane thing and let him recover. You see how she's stepping out and just <laughs> basically just stalling. And he's saying, no, no, I'm fine. Let's play. The umpires do the same thing when their friend the catcher gets zinged as well. They'll go out and dust off the plate that has no dirt on it. The technology that these umpires have now with the pretty much the armor under the shirt and go back to my days where you had that the big balloon. My goodness, <laughs> you could barely see over the, the big pad, the blocking pad, so to speak, that yeah. kind of looked like used that. Used at football practice. Yeah. Mayor swings through it. I think those were called balloon protectors and they were used in the American League for a long time. Probably maybe even into the early 80s. That was an American League thing. That ball to Mayer, she eats it up, fires a first to Miller. Two down for Haley Green to get a shot. How about Madeline White? Just doing a fantastic job. Just, just seems to, she came in, like you said, when, in, in a fire situation, put out the fire, and now has just really kind of uh, kept the night hitters at bay. Green swings through that one, and Jim, not nothing hit hard. All these nothing. outs are just yeah, which is again good movement normally. When when you have a lot of just poor contact, it's almost always late movement. You know the pitch looks really good. You get the fat part of the bat, you're right on it, and then it breaks inside, and you take it off the hands and you ground out. Hit foul. So get, green down 0-2. Getting ahead is a big deal too, right? Again, we said this earlier. Now. She's got in a good spot. She knows she can throw whatever she wants, off speed, in, out, up, down. I mean, the hitter has to sit up there and think, okay, anything close, i got to try to put a, a bat on it. But right now, huge advantage pitcher. And that got her. Wow. Well, if you're going to get on, which the Knights desperately need, got to do it somehow. And that caught green. And that right there is why coaches have gray hair. You're up 0-2 and you hit them. Wow. Years ago, I coached with a guy, uh, actually an Indianapolis Indian legend, got him by the name of Razor Shines. And Razor had a cup of coffee with the Expos uh, in the big leagues, but he helped us coach at Bishop Chittard. And Razor would always say, if you're going to hit them 0-2, just hit them with the first pitch and get it over with. <laughs> Don't waste two pitches. The Indians will be celebrating Razor Shines this year on a Razor Shines Day, so kudos to the legend. Yeah, I remember those games. I, I used to go to a lot of those guys at the old Bush Stadium out on West 16th Street. A 
Paul High. Back when the Indians were affiliated with the Montreal Expos and guys like Andre Scalaraga, Larry Walker, Randy Johnson, I could go on and on. Uh, they won three American Association championships in a row. They were fun to watch. As a Cleveland guy, I'm very fond of the Expos because one of the biggest heists in American League trade history when the Indians acquired Bartolo Colon. Ooh. A lot of people forget that. That Colon came from the Expos and had a marvelous career with the Indians. And yeah, I remember him primarily as an Indian now. Again, he probably played for what? 300 years. years and well, he's probably still playing seven somewhere. Seven or eight teams. If you, if you play Immaculate, uh, uh, I think it's called, it's a, it's a game you can play on your phone. I play it every day. But Immaculate Baseball, where you try to guess which guys played for both teams. <laughs> Bartolo is one of those guys where if you can't think of anybody else, just type his name in there. You got about a 50 50 shot. Three and one to the nine. So, so you hit the eight hole and, you, and you're, you're about to walk the nine hole. Again, this is why coaches have gray hair. And that got Minix. So, Jim, I don't know if there's an announcer's jinx in baseball or softball yeah, or any is. of these bat sports, but you may have just indo indoctrinated yeah. to this one. Yeah, blame me. Okay. As soon as you said that she came in and did yeah. the damage, she has two hit batters yeah. back to back. That's going to bring <laughs> Coach Allen. Now, see, again, this is where I would come out and I'd go, do you know the rules? Do, do you know how this game is played? You hit the eight hole and the nine hole. Neither one of these people could hit water if they fell out of a boat. All right? And you're hitting them and putting them off. Hmm. You know what? I blame myself. I don't know if they're talking to her pitcher, but a big week coming up for the Mount Vernon University in general is they are set to announce their eighth president in university history. It'll be Dr. Carson D. Castleman. Which brings up big inauguration this upcoming Wednesday, April 3rd. Which brings up a trivia question. Who was the United States' eighth president? Do we know? I think it was you're Martin. looking at me like I know. And I, I, I'm I think clueless. it was Martin Van Buren because of a Seinfeld episode. If you episode. know that, then. Uh, the only reason I know is because of that, that Seinfeld episode. <laughs> the Van Buren boys. There. I'm just surprised <laughs> there was a Seinfeld reference to the eighth president. That ball over to Mayor to Miller. End of the threat. Knights get nothing. It stays 5 2. Wine gets out of it. We'll go to the top of the fifth here on the ISC Sports Network. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. Does your school offer high quality education? Does it offer virtual or hybrid options? Marion University Preparatory School educates students in a safe, faith-based environment focused on college and career exploration. Here at Marion University Preparatory School, we empower parents and help students to master what they love and learn as they live. We are now enrolling students in grades six through nine this fall. Full financial aid packages are still available. Act now to make MU Prep your school for 2022. The top of the fifth here on the campus of Marion University. And five runs is exactly what the Mount Vernon Nazarene Cougars have. And that's three more than the hometown Marion Knights down 5-2. Well, here's an opportunity if you're Mount Vernon. You got two, three, four, five, and six. Man, oh man, how you would like to tack on two or three more here. Because these folks may not see the, the plate again if you don't. And that might find the line. It does. Holcomb in the second standing up and a leadoff double here in the top of the fifth. And some excellent base running here, John. It, you're going to see on the replay, as that ball gets down, she's, she's, she's going to second. But when she sees it get away from the right fielder right there, well, there's no doubt now. Now it's over right now. She, she again, she was going to hit that bag hard with a strong turn. And then had she fielded it cleanly, she may have slammed on the brakes. But the minute she saw the ball bobbled, forget it. That's going to give Molly Pence a chance. 
with Holcomb on second. Nobody down. And Pence, single in her last at bat, did score in that third inning. Lays it down. Fair ball. Good play by Green. That does get Holcomb over, so. The and chore was done. And again, nothing at all. You know, Green didn't do anything wrong. Now, you know, I, I looked like that ball had a little bit of a weird spin to it. She may have been able to, uh, you know, let it go foul. But, you know, I don't care what you do. But just do something. And she did. She, she made a quick decision, and she got an out. And one of my many sayings, when in doubt, get an out. But it did look like that ball was kind of maybe spinning toward the, the line. But, you know what, again, I'll take it. That's going to bring up Avery Miller. She's been busy on twice, two runs scored. That ball outside, evens it up at one. Just missed, good spot. Catcher's asking the umpire, where was it? She set up a little outside, and then, you know, that's where she threw it, but that one might have been a little too far outside. And that was an excuse me swing. Yeah, that was a try not to get hit in the face swing is what that was. Yeah, she obviously did not want to swing at that thing, and then at the last thing, it was too late. Now batting will be 24 with Kenzie Hancock. So Avery Miller on the excuse me. Grounds out to Macy Cohn. She gets the out. A big one. Yeah, again, I got to think that that's late movement. That, you know, that ball looked good. And then and all of a sudden, Han it Kenzie Hancock pops it up. Hoffman under it, gets it, and Cohn gets out of trouble. So after the leadoff double, Cone gets out of it. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. Knights need some runs here on the ISC Sports Network. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. So just two runs for the Knights and just on one hit. The majority of that damage was done on walks and a few hit by pitchers. And the Knights need to find the bat magic that they had in game one. And they're running out of time. Bottom of the fifth. It'll be Knox, Madeer, and Norman for the Knights. Well, very similar to the last inning. I mean, now Marion starts with two, three, four, five, six. This is your best shot. You need to get runs here. Just get a couple. You don't need them all. Ball fouled out of play. 0 and 1. And certainly you'd like to put a crooked number up there, but sure Coach Fleming would settle for uh, two, maybe three here. That'd be great. And what a shot. That ball was hit right on the nose. But Melick was there to eat it up for the first out. Well, she wears that mask for a reason. Of course, it's called the hot corner. Everybody knows that. And she was playing in kind of close, expecting maybe a slap or a bunt. And is able to get the glove in front of her face and come up with the out. Now to bring up Abby Madeer, has scored one of the two Knights runs. She was, one of, she was the one that got hit by the pitch in that first inning. And there's a ball up the middle and a single. So Madeer. Possibly the spark plug that can get this inning going for the Knights. You know, you mentioned it, John, and I, again, it's just one of those baseball, softball gods things as you see that pitch. Nice job. Pitches on the outer half, just took it to the right side of second base. People who get on via the walk or hit pitch, they just seem to score. You can give up a leadoff double where the guy knocks the fence down, and then you'll strand him at second base, but or her at second base. But for some reason, walks and hit by pitches always seem to come around. Norman finds the 
opposing team pitching area for a foul ball, the 0-1. Norman walked in that first inning to drive in a run. Abby Madeer does have three stolen bases on three attempts. So, now you, again, you don't want to run yourself out of an inning, but I've seen worse ideas. That ball fouled back a little bit out of a zone. I think Norman probably could have let that go, but now she's down 0-2, so she's got to be a little bit more selective now at the plate. Well, if you're wine, you just change her up. You got to slow it down. You got to change speeds. She's kind of had it pretty well timed down, so you want to give her something. You want to change her eye level. That ball way outside. Yeah, they, they came back with the fastball and just decided to change the location. But one way or the other, you had to change the eye level. You, she looks, she's awful comfortable when they're fouling it straight back. Count one and two. Madeira on first. That ball down in the dirt, so 2-2. Two, two. Norman trying to work back in the count. Yeah, see so Norman making this in at bat. Again, man, they're precious. You get three or four a night. And that got her. Yep, I think I got her on the wrist. Well, you take them as you can get them. Yep. And that is the fourth hit by pitch so far. Three by Wine. Hoffman had the first one. So runners on first and second. One out. Abby Hoffman going to get a chance. She struck out in her last at bat. That ball high. Good hold. Good hold. She was ready to go. You know, again, I don't know how it's taught now, but I used to always teach as a hitter, you know, you're thinking yes until no. I'm going to swing. I'm, I'm looking for something I can drive. And then at the last second, you say no. You can't say no and then try to catch up to it. It's too late. And that ball high. So Hoffman in a good spot, 2-0. Coach is turning her loose, so he said, hey, it's got to be awful good, which is, again, same. I would say got to be your favorite pitch. And then some kid would swing at a pitch in the dirt, and I'd be like, well, okay, well, that's your problem, son. Your favorite pitch is an awful pitch. That ball outside, 3-0. Madeira on second, Norman on first. Now, again, Coach gave that wipe of his chest and held one finger up, and that's probably his way of saying there's only one pitch I'll let you swing at, and we both know what it is. Yep, she decided back. That, yep. Yeah, she decided that was, that was full take right there. Hoffman didn't want it, but now she'll go to work. 3-1 to count. Runners on first and second. The Knights down three. And that got her. My goodness. Yeah. Man, oh, man. If I'm the pitching coach for Mount Vernon, I'm walking home. Just so I can get the anger out. And that's going to bring a visit. Coach Howled. Now, I'm not blaming anybody, but, you know, some of it may be, too, where the catcher is setting up. I mean, you, as the catcher, you what? How, how many hit pitch or hit by pitch? One, five. two, three, four, five. So I've sit and watched this five times. I got to change something. I, I got to give her a different target. I got to move over, you know, three or four inches. Here's action in the bullpen down there from Mount Burnham. They're number 28. That's Sheridan Sullivan who got the start in game one. And I thought she did a nice job, frankly. She did a decent job of keeping the, the Knights hitters who, again, went into that thing as a group batting 377. She kept them at bay for a while. Well, Coach Howell's going to stay with Wine here. Bases loaded, leadoff single by Madeer, and then two hit by pitches, Norman and Hoffman. Got a little raw hide on them. But now it's up to Lily Went. Well, we talked about it earlier, John. It's kind of now or never. 
That ball high. Now the fact that you've had an extended inning, you may roll the, the top of the order back through, you know, in the sevens, which is nice as a coach, but had you gone, you know, three up, three down, you probably would not have seen those guys again. And there's a strike. And again, I like the patience there. You know, the end of the last inning, you had two hit by pitches, and then the next hitter came up, and on the first pitch, grounded out to second baseman. It's like, okay, she's obviously struggling to find the plate, and we swing at the first pitch. Seems like maybe we're a little too aggressive. And there's a shot up the middle, finds a hole. One run will score. Here comes a second. Norman scores on the base hit by Lily Went. 5 4. Well, there's two of them. You got first and third, and one out. You still got an inning here. Lily Went comes through with a big base hit here in the bottom of the fifth, drives in two, and the Knights cut it to one. And Coach Howell does, in fact, make the change. Bringing in the aforementioned uh, starter from the first game, Sullivan. And Madeline Wine. Can't really discredit her effort, Jim. She no, came in in a no. real tough situation and, and got through it for a couple of innings, but at some point you just had a feeling this night's offense was going to come to work, and they and they have shown it here with patience and timely hitting now yep. in the bottom of the fifth. And it looks like Coach Fleming's made a change of some sort as well, so expect a pinch hitter maybe or a pinch runner because he was over there talking with the umpire for a minute. They had their lineup cards out, so... See if we can get those changes. We'll keep our visuals open. But that is Sheridan Sullivan, the senior who started game one from Thornville, Ohio, played her baseball, her softball. My goodness. Opening day was just a few days ago, Jim. I'm still trying to get situated yeah, absolutely. here. Absolutely. No one's managed. But she played her high school softball at Sheridan High School for the Generals. So she'll see if she can get out of this one. Runners on the corners, one out. And Grace Meyer. Grace came into the day batting 426. We talked about her in the first game. What a luxury it is to have a 426 hitter this low in the lineup. And there's a big run at third base. And the, oh my goodness. That is great softball. And we're tied at fives. Good heads up base running from the Marion Knights. Yeah, you know, again, you, you try the double steal there, and you know, you're gonna see it on, on the replay here. The pitch is outside, so it's almost like a pitch out. Mount Vernon had the right call or the right play called. Just the speed of uh Abby Hoffman, they, they didn't have any choice. They just couldn't get her. That ball outside, 2-0. So down three here in the bottom of the fifth. The Knights playing great softball, tied it at five. Two old pitch, one out, you can't really move on contact. And there's a walk. And Jim, something very interesting about this inning is you've kind of seen every element of softball here, hit by pitch. You've seen yep. a stolen base. You've seen a base hit. Now you've seen a walk, a little yep. bit of everything, allowing these runs to come across and tie in this ball game. And again, we, we talked about it earlier. Again, the two hit by pitch, they both came around and scored. And there's a strike. But Haley Green has an opportunity. Went at second, Meyer at first. And Green took one to the body in her last at bat and just foul down the third base line. Haley reached base all three times in the first game, had a base hit, reached on an air, and I think uh, walk. 
or a hit by pitch. Let me go back and look. It was a walk. The 0-2. Boy, just missed. That that was a tough one to take. But she got it. She lives to, to swing the bat again. That ball fouled straight back. Stays at one and two. Tied at fives here in the fifth. Again, if you're marrying, you got to be a little bit careful on the base pass. Freeze on a line drive. Make sure the ball's going through. If it goes to the outfield, turn around and get a good look at it and start shuffling your feet. And that was a good looking pitch, but umpire says no. Evens a count at two. And that ball fouled straight back. Six pitches in this at bat, working on seven here. That ball's no good, so full count. Green has worked it back. What an at-bat for the young lady. Nicely done. Let's see if you can make it pay. Two on, one out. And a shot to left and hits the wall. One run will score. Right behind her is two. Green standing at second. Throw home. Not going to get her. Throw back into the outfield. Green's got open real estate. And they're going to hold her at third. Talk about making that, an at-bat pay. Just a fantastic at-bat by Haley Green there. Again, battling pitches, fouling pitches off, drives this ball into the left center gap. And again, the, the base runners have everything in front of them. All right, you see, so you know the ball's down. So you're going to score one, you're going to score two. Now, I'd like to see the on-deck hitter Tell the uh, runner that you may want to get down. She told her to get down. It was too late. And then the ball gets thrown around the yard. Stop throwing the ball around the yard, right? And then uh, allows the uh, runner to get the third. That's going to bring up Jenna Minix with an opportunity with Green at third. And the Knights have retaken the lead 7-5 on a great at bat from Haley Green. And how important is seven, eight, and nine? They've done it all day, Jim. They have. You know what? You can just concede the other hitters. Yeah, we're done. Um, let's play on. Give us three outs. I want seven, eight, and nine. Come up. Minnick swings through that one. One and two. Now, a lot of teams could have maybe substituted a uh, uh, you know, that speedster, that base running specialist. Because if the ball gets in the dirt, you want to be able to score another one. That ball fouled back. One and two. Because as good as the Mount Vernon Nazarene pitchers have been at times, they've also been a little wild at times. So you get a fast runner at third, you score on a pass ball. That ball high. Yep. Evens it at two. two Five runs scored here for the Knights in the fifth. Too much movement on that pitch. You know, when the pitcher's glove or the catcher's glove goes from a set position to up and in, you're not going to get it. And that'll be it for Minix. Good pitch there from Sullivan. Now batting for Marion, number 30, Savannah Harwiger. So that's going to bring up Harwiger. And if anybody, Jim, if you know you want to say someone has struggled a little bit during this doubleheader, it's the person that came into this one batting 500. Well, that just means she's due. And, and she umpire asked for help. He went said a little she bit. Did. Yeah, she did. Tough call, honestly, from just because of the position. If the field umpire, and he's in the right spot, don't get me wrong. But it would have been an easier call had he been straight down the line. But he, he said it was enough. Evens it up, one and one. Yeah, you generally don't keep a, a 500 hitter down all day. Go. 
Green on third. That ball fouled back. One and two. Now the last three hitters for Marion have had two strike counts and have found ways to make things happen, except obviously for the strikeout. But that ball high and outside. Evens it up at two and two. Harry Carey would say, deuces are wild. Harwiger swings through it. Green strand at the third, but not before. The Knights with the counter punch with five runs in the fifth. What can Mount Vernon do? Top of the six coming up on the IC Sports Network. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. After five runs in the bottom half of the fifth, the Knights have come out on top. 7-5 here in the top of the sixth. In this Crossroads League matchup between the Knights of Marion and Mount Vernon Nazarene Cougars. And Brooklyn Crumb flies out to Minix for out number one here in the top half of the sixth. Sun has been out all day or all morning and, and or all afternoon, and Minix does a nice job of kind of battling a little bit, but staying with the ball. That brings up Kira Mayer. She scored a run in the second. That ball inside, 2-0. and And a chopper to third. Green eats it up, fires a first. And Norman holds the bag for the 5-3 put out, out number two. Really nice play on both ends here as you see a nice little pick Quick hands there by Haley Green and then fires across to Sierra Norman who does a nice job of uh, playing the scoop and keeping her foot on the bag. So nice play. So Sean DeMellick will try to get things going for the Cougars here with two down in the top half of the sixth. There's a strike. On the baseball side of things, Jim, I know fans are getting excited for opening day here in the Circle City. Our Indianapolis Indians will host opening day coming up on Tuesday in our ISC Sports Network crew. There's a base hit through the left side for Menick. But they're going to open the gates up. Victory Field on Tuesday and our ISC Sports Network crew will do a fantastic job. For all 75 home games this year on the production side, they'll host the Memphis Redbirds. Read the paper this week, John. This is the 122nd season of Indianapolis Indians baseball. For a long, long time in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, maybe into the 50s, they were, in fact, 
affiliated with your Cleveland team. 1954 through 1957. Started play in 1902. Is there anything else you'd like to know? Wow, there's been some I've read the Wikipedia page. I, I found out that they were the affiliate of the Indians. And yeah, they, uh, they won a triple-A championship during that time. There's a base hit. So back-to-back -back hits from the Cougars here in the top half of the sixth from Hoover and Mellick. Hoover's had a nice day overall. Yeah, again, now here's eight and nine getting on here, a couple base hits. The only drawback if you're Mount Vernon Nazarene is that it's, there's two outs, but at the same time, you, you know, you got your number one hitter up. She does bat 379 coming into the day. So here's an opportunity with two, two outs. You're moving on contact. That ball outside. So you're either going to score on anything hit to the outfield or they're going to catch it and the inning's over. But if you can drive something to the outfield, maybe you get at least one and you ought to end up with another runner on third. There's a strike. You know what? It's a pretty simple game, John. We're not docking the space shuttle. It's about getting hits and getting people in. On the defensive side, it's about getting people out. Nice pitch. Was that fouled? Apparently, as everybody stops. I didn't know if it was just an ugly pitch, and she swung and missed. Count one and two. Back-to-back -back base hits by the Cougars. Has Mellick and Hoover on first and second. Hill trying to capitalize. That ball outside evens it up at two and two. I like the idea, though. I like the thought process. That ball was clearly off the plate, but they were like, look, if you want to get yourself out here, do that with this. That ball in the dirt. So now three and two. So good at bat here by Hill. Trying to get the Cougars back on the board. Runners moving on the release. And that ball fouled. And then we get to come back and do it again. One of many, many multiple pitch at bats on both sides today. And that ball fouled on the right side. Keep it at three and two. This will be the eighth pitch of the at-bat. Runner still on the move. Cougars down two, but in a good position here. Hill working a good at-bat against Cone, who's been in the whole time, despite the five runs. And there's another foul ball. Seen a lot of these today, yeah. Jim. Now, again, this may have been where, and I think this is where an assistant coach becomes real important, John, where they may come up to the head coach and say, hey, do we have anybody that can score from first, you know, on, on a base hit? Is there anybody we can sub in? And will that end it to Hoffman? It will. So a good at bat from Hill ends in a fly out to Hoffman. That'll end the threat. We'll go to the bottom of the six. With the Knights up, 7-5 here on the ISC Sports Network. Bottom of the six here on the campus of Marion University has the hometown Knights ahead of the Mount Vernon Nazarene Cougars 7-5 on a beautiful Saturday afternoon here in the Circle City. Alongside my broadcast partner Jim Leisure, I'm John Kupo. I want to thank our fantastic ISC Sports Network crew. Vince, Jordan, Sean, David, Rob, Dylan, Dennis, thank you so much. Fantastic job today. Love the drone shots. That's a new element that we saw today that we are excited about. All the dog photos, just look at that guy just hammering down on that. <laughs> and we have a new pitcher in for the Cougars. It's Nadia Hoffman. Re-entering, she was a starter of this game, coming back. You know, in a close ball game like this, obviously, again, you, it's not uncommon for a coach to go back to the starter. You can re-enter the starter and go down and say, hey, how do you feel? This has obviously turned into quite a ball game, and, and I really need some outs here. Most she starts kids, off with a strike. Most kids are going to tell you, you know what, coach, I'm ready. And 
Knox swings through that one, 0-2. So as of right now, the switch back to Hoffman's paid off, up 0-2. On the night's second hole hitter, Brooke Knox. Tried to float it in there. Oh, waste one. And swings through that one. So Hoffman comes back in, does her job, gets the first K. One down. Fifth strikeout for this second game for the Knights. Not bad. I mean, you're going to strike out some. Here's Abby Madeer. Had a base hit and scored in that fifth inning. Which got the Knights to the two-run advantage, scoring five runs in that bottom half of the fifth. That ball inside, 2-0. Both those pitches pretty much in the same spot. Late movement in on the right-handed hitter. Got to adjust. That ball high, 3-0. Sometimes it can be a simple, John, of just where you're placing your foot on the pitcher's rubber if you're leaving everything, in this case, to the pitcher's uh, pitching hand side. Move over a little bit. Move over three inches. Deer wanted to go, but the umpire said, stay here, young lady, and try this again. Now, oftentimes, if, if the movement is subtle enough, you know, the hitter doesn't even notice. The deer swings through that, 3-2. Now, again, she's on the, uh, Hoffman is right in the center of the pitching rubber, so if she were to move all the way to the left, all the way to the right, then obviously that's a tell, but sometimes you can just move an inch or two and no one notices. And that's a sky ball. And it finds its way out of the ballpark. Well, we, sh we should have a fantastic shot of that one as that one almost hit our cameraman in left center field. So this one, uh, if we got a good look at it, should look like it's coming right into your living room. That ball needed a calendar as far as timing to get out of the ballpark, but it did yep. deep to center field. And four bases for Abby Madeer. So you're going to see it there. Just carries, 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 and drops right over the fence and right in front of the little camera stand there. So she gets the crown. Batting for the Knights now is number four, Sierra Norman. So now it's Sierra Norman after the home run by Abby Madeer. Got to love the big fly, don't you? It's her first of the season. That ball inside. 2-0 to Norman. Well, I missed Mark Norman's at bat here. Or, or, I'm sorry, Abby Madeer's at bat. I put it on Norman, so I need her to hit a home run so I don't have to erase. And that ball found the corner. 2-1 to Norman. She got hit by a pitch in that fifth inning, and she also scored. That ball inside, that almost got almost, it. Almost, yeah. Mentioned the Indians, our Marion baseball team will head out to Mount Vernon. They'll take the trip on 70 East to face these Cougars on Monday. And a walk for Norman, she'll take first. So Norman on base three times today, two walks and a hit by pitch. We're going to see a pinch runner. That's Emily Phillips. We'll take over the bag at first. Now Abby Hoffman with a chance. One out. Emily Phillips, who just took first base. 
for Sierra Norman. Hoffman was one of the hit-by-pitch casualties in that fifth inning. But she came around the score as well. That ball high. Score is 8-5 and a long ball, courtesy of Abby Madeer, her first on the season. What a time to get your first one. That ball had some movement on it. Yeah, I mean, she really does, uh, Nadia Hoffman, have good movement on her pitches. She just needs to corral it. Because sometimes, you know, again, it just it's out of the zone. And there's a blooper to short, handled by Hancock, and Phillips will retreat to first. Two down. Setting now for Marion, number five, Lily Wentz. Phillips does a nice job running the base. It's not hard. I mean, the play's right in front of you, but I have seen kids doubled up in that situation because they're just not paying attention. Two outs now, so running on contact. Lily went big base hit in that fifth inning. She also scored. Phillips with a huge secondary lead there. Let's see if they're going to put her in motion and try to get her to second base and score another one. Ball high, 2-0. Obviously, uh, you know, nine runs looks better than eight, so if you want to get an opportunity to get a runner in scoring position, base knock scores them. That ball inside. 3-0. And Went takes it on four. So four pitches and a walk for the former Bishop Chittard Trojan. Now runners on first and second. Ella Piercy heads out to first to spell Lily Went as a pinch runner. That is the tenth free pass, either by walk or hit by pitch, today for the uh, Cougar pitchers. And then again, when you when you go back and look at the game and you break it down and you say, all right, let's say the the score stays three. You know, we we lost by three, but we gave him ten free bags. Huh, wonder why we lose. And this gives Grace Meyer another chance. And Jim, you had mentioned a few times when you're in your seven hole and you have her batting 426 coming into this one. It's a nice luxury to have. Yeah, and again, I think the way that uh, Coach Fleming has constructed the lineup is he really has two lineups. He has the leadoff person, the contact person, the power hitter, and then you know, the cleanup person, and then they start over again. Where you, where you then have more of a kind of a leadoff type hitter, you know, in, in the five hole, six hole, and now she's the power person. So, you know, the, the six hole is a little more of a contact person, and she's going to clean it up. That ball outside, 2-1. That ball floats high, 3-1. And, Jim, possibly a situation, maybe, I mean, Haley Green, 254, is this kind of a pitch around situation? Oh, it could be because, again, she is a good hitter, but at this point, you got to give her something. That was a strike. Uh-oh, now we have a situation. Yeah, we got a problem. We lost track of the count, didn't we? And, well. Okay. Well, discretion being the better part of valor, <laughs> Sidney Hoover decided, look, if I throw it to first, that girl's going to run to third. And, honestly, she probably was thinking – It'll be midnight before we get home, so I'll just let her go back. Lots going on. We just remain full, 3-2. Now you move on the walk. <laughs> and that ball fouled out of play. Oh, again, you know, again, they're, they're kids, and they're not always focused. I mean, you got to know the count. you got to know how many outs there are. Well, this is where I go back on the air check, and I figure out how do I call that next time. Yeah, now, <laughs> now you're moving on the pitch. And that ball fouled out of play. Yep. So runners on first and second. 
Meyer having a good at bat here, trying to stay alive. Marion up 8-5 on the home run by Madeer. That ball outside, works the walk, bases loaded. So the 11th free pass. And that's going to bring up Haley Green, who put one to the Ready? fence, her last at bat. So she's seeing it, right? You got to see it, Will. That ball high. That ball inside. Hoffman have real trouble finding the zone here. Well, she had real trouble in the first inning as well. And that's what led to basically her removal. Finds a zone there. Yep. 2-1. Haley Green just waiting on a little bit of a mistake. Just leave that out over the plate just a little bit more. Let me get my hands through and get the bad head through. Fouled that one. Back, count even at two. Yeah, nice cut at it. Got to see it, right? You know, you, your eyes go all the way down. I, they always say, see the ball, hit the bat. And in all the years that I played, I never, ever saw the like, I just couldn't do it. My eyes weren't that good. But that's what you want to do. You want to take your eyes to the ball, to the bat. And she swings through that, so Hoffman gets out of it. But the Knights get one on the long ball by Abby Medeer. We'll go to the top of the seventh. The Cougars have one more shot here on the IC Sports Network. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. On the campus of Marion University, sees the Marion Knights up 8-5, headed to the top of the seventh. The Cougars have one more shot from Mount Vernon Nazarene. Be sure to join us for some baseball April 12th as the baseball team will take on the Pilots of Bethel. And then we'll be back here the day after on April 13th for some more softball as the Maple Leafs from Goshen head into town right here on the ISC Sports Network. Mallory Holcomb to lead things off. And if you're Coach Howland again, I, or how old, I... Been in worse situations. You got two, three, four. You got a shot at it. And little floater to left field drops. So Holcomb starts things off in the right fashion for the Cougars. Nice little piece of hitting there again. Just staying with the pitch. Pitch was on the outer half. Instead of trying to pull it and grounding out weakly to the second baseman, you just kind of slap it out in left field. Left fielder was playing short. Abby Hoffman was playing kind of in, but that one was perfectly placed. Now Molly Pence, see if she can extend the inning for the Cougars. The ideal situation here for the Knights is they can just walk off of this one, not have to bat in the bottom half of the seventh. And Pence with a hard shot to center. Holcomb's going to get the third easily. And now runners on the corners, no outs for the Cougars. Really good base running there by Mallory Holcomb. She came around, and at, before she got to second base, watch her eyes. She's got her eyes on the coach right there. She's looking at him, and again, he's obviously sending her on. And Nice job. The ball was in right center. Easy play, but again, I like the base running. Exactly the way you coach it. Eight 
Avery Miller. Runners on the corners, nobody out. Mount Vernon down three. That ball high and outside. Nobody up in the bullpen, I don't believe, for Marion. It's kind of hard. I don't think I, I, I think their bullpen is, is in play and there's nobody down there. There's a strike. But it might be out of play. It might be behind the, yeah, there's, there's action in Mount Vernon's bullpen, but. Looks like Bailey Sheets, she made an appearance before for Mount Vernon. Maybe a tough look there. There might be a bullpen behind the dugout that we can't see. And that ball finds a hole to the right side. Run will score. On her way to third is Pence. And three straight hits, gets a run. Cougars get one back, 8-6. Well, deja vu all over again. Again, the, the runner at first base in uh, Pence. She does a nice job of picking up the third base coach. That's an easy one. Ball goes through, you can walk home. But the, the runner on first has to pick up that third base coach. So apparently there is a bullpen behind the dugout that we couldn't see, John, because Stunkel's going to come back in and try to shut this thing down. So Coach Scott Fleming is going to go with his starter from game one to try to close this one out with runners on the corners and three straight hits for the Mount Vernon Nazarene Cougars. And Jim, you mentioned it before that certain pitchers have certain catchers they mm -hmm. want to go with. Yep. And Grace Meyer put on the gear, and she'll be behind the dish. Yeah, you know, again, like any other game, this this game, a lot of it is mental, and you got to feel comfortable with the people around you and the people you know who are catching you or whatever. But if that's a simple move for a coach, if that's what you want, let's you know, let's go ahead and do it. And going to be Stunkel's 15th appearance. Again, starting game one, going the whole game. But a little different situation here coming in. Runners on the corners. Nobody out. Down two is Mount Vernon. But three straight hits. And there's a little bit more sugar on those hits this time around, Jim. It wasn't the kind of the soft liners that we saw, but this this is Mount Vernon baseball, this what is, we're seeing. Yeah, this is. And, you know, we talked about it how, you know, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it probably with, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and that's, you know, when you can lead the seventh inning off with the two hole, and then three gets a hit, and, you know, two gets a hit, three gets a hit, four gets a hit. That's kind of the way you're supposed to do it. And that's out of the zone. Yeah, I don't think for a second that she's going to bunt here. You're not going to give away an out when you're down two runs. Hannah McCoy is on first base for Mount Vernon. More speed. Try to get that run in. Stunkel high, 2-0. And to me, these are just 100% takes. You know, you're just going to show that that bunt there just to give the pitcher something to think about. But if I'm the pitcher, I'm looking at the glove. She's not going to bunt. And she slaps it over to second. Oh, and throws it away. Run will score. Harwiger couldn't grab it. Well, again, you got exactly really what you wanted. You were going to give up the run, and you, you, you want to have a shot at the double play, but to throw just a little bit wide of the, the shortstop covering. And, uh, again, just honestly a bit of a disaster almost for, for Marion here as you now have first and second and nobody out. So there's a strike from Stunkel. And she certainly has some work to do here. Nobody out, runners on first and second. Mount Vernon has got two back already and nobody out. So now it wouldn't surprise me now. You lay a bunt down here and you get runners, you know, both runners in scoring position. Before I wouldn't have done it, now I might. Depends on who you got bunting. I mean, if you know the, the hitter struggles to bunt, you don't do it. Crum has put it into play all three times this afternoon. Didn't play in game one, is one for three. Had a base hit in her first at bat. And 
that was just a nasty pitch. Crum didn't want to swing, but she did anyway. That was yeah, just again caught her off guard with the off-speed pitch, and she'd already fired the, the back hip, and then the hands unfortunately had, had moved enough that she wasn't able to uh, stay back on it. And she swung through that one, so a big out for the Knights there. Same pitch, you know, just off-speed pitch. Kind of falls like it's just falling off a table. Some great camera shots here from in front. That ball's obviously out of the zone, but it was at the front yeah, knee about three-fourths of the way, and so she f decided to fire. She got fooled. Remember Kira Mayer. She scored in that second inning. I have that strike at is only the third for the night pitching today. Mount Vernon's done a nice job of putting the ball in play and putting some pressure on the defense. And there's a long shot to left field. And that's going to clear the wall. Stunkel put a charge into a pitch. And Mayer put the charge to let it leave the ballpark. 10-8, Mount Vernon. How about that? What an at-bat for the young lady here. And she's getting a bucket of something. I don't know what it is there. The young lady has their, their little home run celebration. But just... Pitch on the inner half, she opens the front hips, fires the hands inside, gets the fat part of the bat all the way around, and that's what you do to an inside pitch. You pull it and you put a charge in it. Nice job. A three-run shot by Kira Mayer here in the top half of the seventh has given a lead back to the Cougars 10-8. Well, you got to get eight and nine here, right? I mean, you can't let this continue. Melick swings through it. Down 0-2. And Jim, in a fashion that, you know, we had just talked about how Mount Vernon got to this point, but that is not Mount Vernon softball. Well, that, that big fly obviously isn't. I mean, they, they've only got, I think, came into the ball game with, or the, the day with five home runs as a team. But you know what? Again, it, get them when you need them. Right again, you know, like you're down 11 to one. Kid goes deep. Who cares? <laughs> right. Either way, whether it's 12 to one or 12 to two, uh, or 11 to two, get them when when there's ducks on, and she did. And Mayer put a charge into that one. There's Sydney Hoover swings through that one. 01. On the zone there, down 0-2. Falls behind quickly. That ball slapped Boy, to the she, fence on the right side. She hit the absolute back half of that one, right? I mean, just barely got the, the end of the bat on the, the side of the, of the softball. And that ball flared to the right side, drops fair. And Hoover gets a base hit. And she continues her good day. She's three for four in the second game. Fifth hit of the inning, John, and we are back to the, basically almost to the top. We're about, about ready to bat around. Zary Hill. You know, th this type of heckle and, and jide or uh, Jekyll and Hyde is, uh, you know, that might be why they're 11 and 11, you know, coming into this thing is because they, don't, they have a game where they don't play real well and then they have another game where they play really well. And you got to find, obviously, the, a, a way to break that tie. The ball skips in the dirt. 2-1. And that ball slapped foul. Yeah, nice shot at it. And Hill. The 
the only Cougar yet to reach base in this second game. All right, three, two, two out. Runner moving on the pitch. Infielders, you just got to know if you get it, you just go one. You're not going to get the, the the runner at second. She's moving on the pitch, so let's go one if you get a ground ball. And Hill flares it to left. Hoffman will get it, but damage done. Five runs, keyed by the three-run shot by Kira Mayer. It's 10-8. Knights got one more chance. Bottom of the seventh coming up on the IC Sports Network. This is the Pepsi for America's best barbecue. Worthy of 100 mile detours and 1,000 likes. Looks good. This is the Pepsi for mopping, dipping, and dousing. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? Best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. Marion University is like a home to me. Campus is where I made friends that I know will last a lifetime. Academics, sports, or arts, Marion's got something for you. Plus, downtown Indy is just 10 minutes away from campus. I'm a huge sports fan. Living in Indy, I've got the Knights, the Colts, and the Pacers. Applying was so fast and easy. I went to Marion for the education, but what I took away was the experience. Marion University offers an exceptional education and an unforgettable experience. Apply today for full scholarship consideration at marion.edu. Doyle Hall, and if they're watching on the ISC Sports Network, they just saw one heck of a comeback inning by the Mount Vernon Nazarene Cougars as they exploded for five runs. Look at the air conditioning units in the window. You know, when I went to college, we didn't have no manby, pamby air conditioning. You sat in your dorm room and you sweated till you passed out. That's what you did. Jim, we only have a half inning left. At one point, maybe a positive comment about your life. <laughs> it's not at easy. At some point. It's not easy being me. That's all I'm looking for. All right. So the Knights got 9-1-2. Jenna Minix has got to be about as good a nine-hole hitter as you can find. She bats almost 300. She's probably going to be taking a little bit or maybe, again, I, I would have my kids take unless they found the favorite pitch. That ball high. You need base runners. And Nadia Hoffman has not been very consistent. She started the ball game. And you don't want to get yourself out. That's the biggest thing. And finds a zone there, 1-1. One, one. Don't hit the pitcher's pitch. You want to hit your pitch. And now she's probably, honestly, she's got the at-bat back. Coach took it away from her going up there, but now 1-1. One, one. He's like, okay, now just play it. Normal. That ball sails in. Took a little bit off of it. Nice, nice decision. Again, give that hitter something to think about. You just throwing the change up for a strike. Are you coming back with gas? Are you coming back with a change up? And that's a flare to left. Crumb will get under it. Out number one. Well, she came back with the off speed, but and Jenna got a little bit of a piece of it, but advantage pitcher there. Knights down to two more outs. See if they can get those two runs back and possibly a third to end this here in the bottom of the seventh. Here's Savannah Harweger. There's a strike. All right. So there you go, Savannah. Now it's your at bat. Do something with it. And she bunts, she's got the speed, and she will beat that out easily. Nicely done, very nice. Caught the Cougars napping just a little bit defensively. Again, a great bunt just deadens the ball and has the wheels to, to beat it out, as you imagine a leadoff hitter would. Now remember, she's, I think, 11 of 11. 18. 18, 18. 18 for 18. So now you got to be cautious. There's the pitch out. 1-0, so Brooke Knox now with a chance. Had to walk in the first inning, scored, but has been silent since. See if she can do something here in the seventh. Swings through that one, one and two. One and one. 
Yeah, now, again, I don't know. You could you could pitch out here. I mean, you could make it 2-1. You'd still be basically even in the count. And that ball straight up. Mary will field it, two down. Knights down to their final out. Home run in the phone booth, John. You're not old enough to remember a phone booth. It was a little room where you would go in and make a phone call if you had a quarter. Superman used to get dressed in a phone booth. Is any of this ringing why, a bell? Why would I not know that? Because you're a fetus with shoes. That's why. You're young. <laughs> I do remember phone booths, Jim. The big gray silver phone yeah. with the black lining. Yeah. And Nobody wiped their you know ear what? on it and how <laughs> no, many germs no, no. and everything. That Heaven only that. knows the amount of germs oh that was goodness. going on in there. Before we had the bath and body sanitizing spray to do a little, yeah. a little hand work on those things. I don't know how we got into this conversation, but I don't either. But we'll leave it up to Abby Medeer who sent it over pitch. the fence. Yeah, I was going to say 2-0 pitch is a good one to hit it over the wall. And there's a strike, 2-1. Deers had herself a good day. Hit by pitch, single hit the home run. She scored three times, but she needs a big one here. Down two, and down to the final out. That ball straight up. Mellick gets it, and that'll do it. The Cougars defeat the Knights, 10 to eight. Knights drop to 23 and five, and the Cougars move back to 500 at 13 and 13. On behalf of my broadcast partner, Jim Leisure, and our entire ISC Sports Network crew, I'm John Cupo, and we thank you for joining us this afternoon for this Crossroads League matchup, our final for Marion. The Mount Vernon Nazarene Cougars 10, Marion Knights 8. Have a great weekend, everybody. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us.